So I'm here with Professor Erwin Laszlo, who is the author of the Reconnecting to the Source, which is a new book. Hi, Erwin. Hello, hello, Nora. It's good to talk with you. It's nice to see you. How are you doing? I'm very good, very excited with the publication of the Reconnecting to the Source uh, very shortly, working on a several other manuscripts at the same time. But I think this will be a big book for me, perhaps the biggest one, the most important one that I've written, at least in recent times. Okay, so can you tell us about what does the title mean? Reconnecting to the source? What is the source that we need to reconnect to? Well, there are two issues here. One, as you say, what is the source? And the other one is, why do we need to reconnect to it? So let me just say a few words about each of these. The source, I think, is what we mean by universe, including whatever deeper layers there are to this universe, whatever higher motivations exist. The source is the origin. It's what used to be called the cosmos, but now we realize that the cosmos is the background in which or on which the universe has appeared about maybe 13.8 billion years ago, a uh, Big Bang. This is probably our universe. So the source is then this totality of reality, which is there, which gave birth to us, and of which we are a part. And it is our intention, our, 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 our obligation in life, our commission as it were, to be one with it, because we have to be part of this tremendous universal evolutionary process, which takes place everywhere, and it is the highest level it appears here on Earth. So the source, just to summarize, is the totality of reality, which is the womb in which the universe has appeared, in which we have appeared in the universe, and of which we are a part. Okay, so very, 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 very big statements, very big tasks, but I would say that it is possible to reconnect with this, to connect with it, I would say, now we have to talk about reconnecting because we have lost the connection. So now we need to reconnect. And why? Because we have lost the way. We no longer are one with the world around us. We are promoting ourselves very often at the expense of other things. And it is, uh, unless we find the way back again, of how to, to move with the laws of the universe, how to become one with that evolutionary process, unless we find that way, we truly risk our extinction. I think natural species, all other species of life, they are, don't have this problem. If they const constantly and consistently make mistakes, they are, dot, are not aligned, they become extinct, but as long as they are alive, they are connected. Now we, humans, have the special ability to make mistakes and try to correct for them, at least temporarily, so we can leave our connection with the source and still manage to survive, at least for a while. And, but this is a risky process it is time to find a way to become one with the source. As, as I said, very big statements, statements that were considered spiritual or esoteric, but these are statements that are coming closer now to being accepted as important tasks and elements of our life through and by science. So I would say, yes, yes that's very interesting. I book about reconnecting to the source. So, is the source similar to the Akashic field, or is there another name for it, or what's the connection? I have written several books, in fact I'm working one on one now, about the Akashic field. The Akashic field is a particular feature of the universe, and therefore it is a feature that is particularly relevant to our life. The Akashic field is a property, is a domain of the universe, in which there are some very specific laws, very specific uh, regularities which hold sway. I just mentioned three of them. 
One is that all things are connected with all other things. The universe as an Akashic field, and I'm using the Akashic, the term Akashic in this sense of the classical understanding, which was about several thousand years, something that is beyond the everyday world. So in this Akashic field, the universe is a domain where everything is connected with everything else. It's also a domain where all things are conserved and nothing disappears entirely. So in this Akashic universe, if you like, this Akashic field as a part of the universe, we can say whatever happens remains in the sense that it influences what will happen after that. Nothing is meaningless, nothing is entirely by chance, and nothing disappears. It's a very, very special idea, and it's now coming to the fore in quantum physics as well. And the third idea of the Akashic field universe is that it evolves. Because everything is connected, everything evolves together. And it doesn't evolve by chance, it evolves toward a particular condition and state, which I describe as a state of coherence, a state of integration, which we can perceive as a state of oneness, and to which we can relate ourselves. So. I think the Akashic field is really a part of the universe and as such is our true and veritable deepest source. So you are talking about the universe. Do you think that there is one universe or do you believe that there are multiple universes? What do you think about that? My personal belief is that there must be other universes because we know that this universe was born, as far as our calculations allow us to tell, was born 13.8 billion years ago in the so-called Big Bang. In the aftermath of the Big Bang, Big Bang, when this fireball cooled, gradually quantum little particles appeared, clusters of vibration appeared, which we can identify as the quantum particles, as quarks and quanta, and then atoms and molecules and so on. And so this universe was born at that time. Now, are there other universes?